What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 12th of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here for these next couple of days, heading into the middle of the month in June. June of 2019. So before we do get into all of these different topics, all I ask from you guys out there, the subscribers, the viewers, if you enjoy this content, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel and you like the content you're seeing here and you want to be a part of the Strive Smart community, feel free to go down below. There are two links, one of them being the Discord chat and the other one being the Facebook group. Get in those communities 100% free of charge and I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in there. So without further ado, let's just get right into it, guys. So we saw a bit of a slight red day today, and to be honest, the markets were pretty boring today. Today for me was a very boring day, and I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate in terms of the stock market today. So the S&P ended up going down about $5.88 here, down about 0.2% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 43 points at the close, down about 0.1%. And the NASDAQ is up right now about $11, but I checked my Yahoo Finance app. It ended up closing down about like 0.3% or something like that. So it was a minimal red day for the NASDAQ. So if we just look at some of these intraday charts for uh, the three indexes that we track on this channel, that I track on this channel, you guys can see today was kind of boring. We gapped up. We were pretty much trading where we were yesterday towards the close of the market for the S&P. And from there, we sold off a bit. We pushed to a lower low here from yesterday's low at about 28.79. We got five points below that to about 28.74. And we were just pretty much chilling at that level for the rest of the day ever since we hit that low middle of the day at about 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys can see it was kind of like a triple bottom at that point you guys can see if I just draw it out very quickly here you guys can see right about 28.75, that's where we held going to the close of the market. And if we go out a bit here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, you guys can see ever since we hit that 29.10, 29.15 level of resistance, there's been a lot of weakness for the S&P 500. You guys can see we hit that level on the 10th of June, which was on Monday. We gapped up to that level, got rejected there. That's kind of like a double top, which is a bearish pattern. And from there, we've been slowly selling off and we hit a lower low today which is kind of alarming here for a potential pullback in my opinion it, it kind of does look like the start of the pullback for the S&P 500 but what would really what would really um solidify the beginning of a pullback in my opinion would be if we broke this level here at about 2875 because notice we held above it today like we saw on the intraday charts and if we're looking a couple days back, that was a level that we hold, uh, that we held on the 7th of June as well before we hit those two uh, big gap up days uh, back to back starting off this week. So this is an important level, very critical in my eyes. If we sell off below that, the next support we may be heading to is around 28.55, maybe around 28.60. And from there, we could be free falling back down to about $2,800 roughly that area. So that's what the S&P 500 is looking like here on a couple of different time frames. You guys can see again, you know, on the 180 here, next support is 2857. Watch that level. Very critical in my personal opinion. If we break that 2870 level, we may be heading down there. So the NASDAQ here, Actually, no, the Dow, we always have to go in order, guys. I always go S&P, Dow, NASDAQ on the videos. I don't know why. That's just how I do it. Uh, Dow, like we said, down 43 points, down 0.17%. And just like the S&P 500, the past 
couple of days, we've been struggling here for the Dow. We hit that peak where we double topped again, just like the S and P 500, and from there we've been selling off. We broke below um, the moving average support here on the five-day, five-minute chart. We're seeing a bearish cross, 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, but we are holding that level of uh, uh, support here from back on the 7th of June, just like we are on the S and P 500. Right, guys? The technicals are very similar in this sense here. So if we break this level on the Dow, if we sell off tomorrow, and if the futures are red in the morning, that could be a signal that we might be selling off tomorrow. You know, we break that. The next level that I'm looking at is going to be at about 25,000. Let's see. Is it 500? I don't know if that's the next support. I don't think it can be at this point. Um... Maybe it is, honestly, guys. Or actually, maybe like 25,000. I guess you can say like 750 could be the next level of support. And from there, it's going to be 25,500. So this can very well free fall here if we break that level. So keep an eye. Again, you guys can see on the smaller time frame charts, markets have been a bit weak here past two days after we did see that huge run up. So this could be setting up for a sell off. It's very, very possible in my personal opinion, or this can literally be a cooling off period before we push to all time highs. But at this point, you know, I don't really see a huge catalyst getting us to those levels. Honestly, I'm not too sure if I see that out there in the markets, but who knows if some big news comes out. I wouldn't be surprised if we did hit those all time highs again, guys, because the market has been irrational. It's running up here on like very slim chance news, very uh, uh, news that's just kind of there to, I think, pump up the markets. And I think anything possible positive at this point that's coming out of the media or Trump, it's going to pump up the markets at this point. And uh, that's kind of, I think the markets are just in a dangerous spot because of that, right? Because these media influences and Twitter, especially with Trump, it has a lot of influence on the markets, which is kind of scary. And I would love to know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. So NASDAQ here, guys, just to get this one out of the way, we can see very similar to the Dow and the S&P. We've been seeing some weakness, especially these past two days uh, of trading. We noticed a double top here at about 7,600. From there, we saw a break below moving average uh, supports. We're seeing a bearish cross here on the five-day, five-minute, and we're still getting rejected by the moving average resistances. So this one's looking like it can sell off and drop at any second here. And notice how we're pretty much holding the general area of about 74.50 up to about 74.75. I guess you can say 74.30, that general area of support, we're holding that. So once we do break the level that we were, if we break the level that we were at on the 7th of June, I would say if we break back below into the 7,300 level on the, on the NASDAQ and let's say tech starts to sell or continues to sell, as you guys can see here, tech was red today, you know, this can drag the NASDAQ down um, and really sell, uh, it can really sell off more at this point with the next support being that 180 SMA here at about 74.50. If we break that, you know, we could be free falling down to about 73.50, which is about 130 points below from where we are right now on the NASDAQ. So markets, guys, right now, today, past couple days, really the past two days, they've been weak. They've been struggling to push out of those resistance levels. Again, I kind of expected this. We kind of expected this because markets, the past couple of days before the start of this week, they were going up day after day after day. We were kind of expecting this cool off period and we got it guys. But now we need to see is this going to drop even further to the downside to continue the overall sell-off that we've been seeing over the past month at this point? That is still in question because we haven't gotten a confirming drop quite yet on any of the major indexes. And if we get that tomorrow, that's going to be a very bearish sign in my personal opinion. So, that's the trading update portion of today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. And drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this. What are your opinions on the market? Where do you see us going here based on your analysis, your fundamental analysis, and your technical analysis? I would love to know what you guys have to think. So, 
to get into the trading portion of today's video, guys, um, there isn't a trading portion of today's video because I personally actually didn't trade today. And I talk about on the channel sometimes, I'm not trading every single day. I'm not one of those guys that does that. Some people do trade every day, but for me, again, for those of you all that have been following me for a while, you know that I'm more of a conservative trader. And I don't bite into a stock whenever I see a play right away, right? It has to be perfect to my personal setup and the opportunity the opportunity just has to be appealing for me to get in and I didn't see any appealing opportunities today and when I don't see an opportunity I simply just sit on cash and not trade and trading you guys I mentioned this on the channel before it's not my only income so if I don't trade one day it's not like I don't make money at all for that day I have some e-commerce stores I do e-commerce a little bit I don't really talk about it too much on this channel I obviously make money from this YouTube channel as well I have dividends coming in that I could use as income, but I choose to just reinvest them due to me being a young guy and I do want to take advantage of compound interest. So some days when I don't see, you know, the the opportunity there, I don't really stress forcing a trade, right? Because again, I have other sources of income that I that I use to live, pay bills, and do stuff like that. So that's kind of my little spiel on that. I didn't trade today, guys. It was one of those days. Again, markets, they were kind of boring. You know, I could have gotten a play on drip here. Drip went absolutely crazy today, up 10% as XOP uh, dumped about 89 cents here that would have been a great play but I didn't catch it I'll be honest I did not catch that which it's a kicker guys you kind of get mad at yourself but you can't catch every single play that's just unrealistic guys we're not superhuman we can't look at 500 charts at once sometimes plays you miss them right that's just the way it goes so let's just talk about a couple of stocks here. I think I actually got a Discord message uh, of about uh, about a couple of stocks that a subscriber and a member of our Discord group chat wanted me to talk about, and I'm pi I'm pulling that up on my phone very quickly right now because I don't remember what they were off the top of my head. Okay, let me see here very quickly. Um, okay, so. Okay, ticker symbol EEM. Let's talk about that one very quickly. Ticker symbol EEM. That is the one that I did get asked about. And this was actually yesterday that he asked me, but I recorded the video after he did end up asking me. So I said I'd, I'd uh, talk about it in this video. So here we go. So EES iShares. iShares, I think... I think Fidelity, does Fidelity own iShares? I don't know, but this is, um, I don't really know much about this. It's an ETF exchange traded fund. Okay, brief technical breakdown here. Let's take a look. Okay, let's get our support resistance tool out so we can draw out some basic levels here. We can see, okay, $40 level of support here on EEM. We sold off, bounced, and we can see markets. This was actually when the markets have been recovering. Is that when this one has been recovering as well? It seems like it, right? Markets recovered, then that ETF recovered as well, which does make sense. But we are noticing here on a brief technical, uh, when we're just looking at this briefly on a technical basis, we're noticing, okay, we broke out of the 50 SMA resistance, which is very good here. We're shooting up higher highs, higher lows, all that good stuff. We got the pullback for the higher low here, and we bounced on that 50 SMA as a support, but now we can see from yesterday's action, I believe, yeah, that was yesterday, we briefly broke out of the 180 SMA, which is a good sign for an even further bullish breakout here, but then we got the pullback today, um, it seems like after market hours yesterday, it ended up dumping, and that led into today's pre-market session, and into the entire day today, so now this is kind of worrying me, because the fact that we briefly popped out of, out of it here, and the fact that we're actually breaking below it in terms of the 180 SMA, this can be a very um, tricky situation here. So a couple of things can happen, right? We're still technically uptrending here. If you guys can see, this pullback can simply be another higher low before we launch off. And if we do end up popping out of here, that's going to be a pretty good sign, in my opinion, for EEM. At that point, not only have we broken out of the 180 SMA fully, but we've 
really just continued the uptrend here as drawn out by the trend line at a higher low. Everything is looking good in terms of our checklist for entering into a stock. At that point, you know, it's going to look very, very nice. Upwards trajectory will still be there. And this pullback, it kind of looks like it was a much needed pullback. With the pop above the uh, 180 SMA, RSI was very overbought. This is looking like it could be a play tomorrow. I'm definitely going to add it to my watch list, and I'm going to keep an eye on it. So the other one is ticker symbol LOW, but let me see actually really quickly here. There, Okay, there's a, there's a spot here actually. I just saw it. I got to mention that here on this video, guys. This spot right here at about $42, this could be where we might fill up to uh, if we end up bouncing on this level. So keep an eye there. That is a resistance obviously from yesterday when we pulled back from that spot, and it's also a resistance from a couple of months ago. We held it as a support on the 26th of March. We broke below the support, making it a resistance, hence why it is a resistance right now. So just to say that uh, on record, 42.20, that's a spot. Be careful of that spot. We could be filling up to it. So LOW, I think that's lows, right? Yeah, lows. Lows we can see. I'm guessing they dumped due to a bad earnings report. This is a company that I don't really track. I don't follow their numbers. I've never owned low stock, but I'm guessing, you know, sudden drop like that, that doesn't, I, you can't really think that's good news, right? You can't think sudden drop after the earnings report. Oh, yep, they reported a good earnings, right? I don't think it, it doesn't always work like that, right? It, it barely ever works like that, right? So lows took a dump there. We can see good signs. It held above our lows from a couple of months ago. Lows, get it, lows, but the lows of the price here, not lows. The company, $83. We ended up holding above $92, roughly around the same level. And I guess you could say the support was right here from what month was this? The beginning or more towards the end of 2019 in January. So we held that support. We bounced on top of it very nicely. Now we're breaking out of that 50 simple moving average here. And it seems like we're just consolidating now at about $96. So this one does look like it's just holding this range from about 98 to about 95 60 about 96 ish dollars so ideally here for lows to potentially fill the gap up to hundred dollars maybe 105 which would be up to the 180 sma or for it to fill up the gap to the next level of resistance which is at about a hundred dollars here if i draw it out for you guys we're going to need to see a dip out of this level of resistance at about 97 75 98 dollars if we pop out of 98 98 to 10 10 150 maybe 101 that could be a nice little play there on lows of about 2 3% potential profit. So those are two breakdowns there for our Discord member, our subscriber. Thank you for the call out and feel free to shoot me a message anywhere guys on Instagram, Discord if you do want me to talk about a specific stock. So that is two that again a subscriber shouted out. Let's talk about some that I'm personally watching here and I talk about these market ETFs a lot. These are simply ETFs that I trade when the markets are volatile. So let's say we do get that confirmation tomorrow that markets, they might be selling off. If we see futures are down in the morning, the futures are heavily red, you know, these market ETFs are going to be very good. In specific, SQQQ here and um, SPXS. SQQQ goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. So this one, if NASDAQ sells off, if tech sells off heavily tomorrow, this could be a very good play here. And the SPXS goes up when whenever the S&P 500 is going down, right? This one, very good play. It's pretty much like shorting uh, the S&P 500 by simply tr uh, trading an ETF. So I guess you get, it's a really, it's really much, much, much safer than shorting a stock. Obviously there's no comparison uh, in that aspect. And these are just very useful when the markets do sell off. And again, we could be setting up for a sell-off now in the stock market. So another interesting one here was Tesla stock. So Tesla, we saw we got the rejection. We did not end up breaking out 
of that 180 SMA, guys, the resistance here, as we can see, past couple of months, Tesla has been getting rejected by that level of resistance. So now that we got the full-on rejection confirmation here, it's very clear that we are getting rejected. Now I'm watching this 50 SMA. If we break this 50 SMA and we start to creep back down until, let's say, the 190s, that's going to be a very interesting play for a potential short, potential put option. You can be playing some options here short term they're typically expensive for tesla but if you do get a good deal those can be pretty pretty good if we do end up getting down to the 190s and again for tesla overall we need to see a change in the narrative before the stock shoots up again in my personal opinion so tomorrow guys i would advise you know just keep an eye on tech tech right now it's been rallying hard and we're finally starting to see it cooling off and if tech dumps the nasdaq is going to dump you know a lot of these indexes are going to follow because the tech's stocks they're some of the biggest companies out there obviously they have a weight in the nasdaq and they obviously have a weight in the s p 500 as well so that can trigger an overall sell-off here in my personal opinion let's take a look and see how some banking stocks have been doing because a lot of people yeah banking seems like it's been selling off bank of america here let's see jp morgan yeah, it sold off a bit today. Wells Fargo, WFC, that one sold off 3% today. So banking seems like it's weakening a bit here. It's continuing, or at least... Uh, WFC here is continuing the downwards trend that it's been on here. Um, let me see, guys. Other ones, crude oil took a massive dump today. We can see it's continuing that 50 SMA rejection here, the downtrend. Crude oil ought to be keeping a look at DWT here for tomorrow. That one's up 13% here. This is another one that I could have traded today, but I did miss it if I'm being completely honest with you guys. And again, that does happen. So DWT, you know, if we continue this sell-off on crude oil, this could be a very good play here. And it's uh, inverse UWT. This one, you know, if we do get to a point in crude oil where we get to a lower level, low and then we start to see some recovery again uwt at that point which goes up whenever crude oil is going up that could be a good recovery play as well so overall right now guys a lot of the market ETFs, I'm watching banking stocks I'm watching tech stocks I'm obviously watching the VIX here, the volatility index, I'm interested in seeing, you know, what is this going to do? If this starts to to, to peak up pre-market during the during the day, you know, that could be an ish, uh, a sign that markets are going to, to, to just get ugly that day. It can pump up the volatility. You know, if we see the VIX, you know, is up, that means the markets are volatile, right? That's just pretty much uh, uh, how, what that means. And it's going to be interesting, guys. I'm really excited to see what the market are going to do here so let me know down below in the comment section what you ended up trading today what are your thoughts on the market i would love to know if you guys enjoyed the video hit that like button let me know if you want me to make any other videos any specific topics you want me to talk about drop that in the comment section as well and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet what are you doing subscribe to the channel hit that red button hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that i do make a video i'll catch you you all in the next video. Peace out.